Welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a standard three view drawing with isometric in SolidWorks. We know in SolidWorks there's multiple ways to do almost everything. And uh, if we're going to start to draw or start to create a drawing, we would typically go to the uh, new, we go to drawing and then say OK and start the drawing that way. But I'm going to show you another way to do it, which is the way that I like to do it, especially when we have the part already created and up on the screen. So I'm going to cancel out of here. And with your part on your screen, the way that we're going to do it is we're going to go up to the upper left hand corner to SolidWorks, hover over that, bring up our, our menu, go over to file and then come down to make drawing from part make drawing from part we're going to click on that that's going to create a drawing of this part that we are doing so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our sheet format and size well for our assignment what you guys are going to do is use a landscape and if this does not show up you may have to click off show only standard formats so if you don't have it if you see something like this click that off and you will get the a landscape option also what i wanted to do is make sure that we have our display sheet format checked because we are going to want to have that on so once we have that click ok and we'll get started now once we get started here you can see the screen changes we have our drawing here now before you click on anything because if you click on some it's going to go away um, they have a, a docker panel on the right hand side that shows what view do you want to put on your drawing well what we're going to do is we're going to start with our front view the front view is going to be kind of our parent view so in this case we're going to click and drag our front view from that panel over onto our screen and we're going to put it roughly in the in the correct position for our front view then from there we're going to release it's going to put our view on there we're going to go up and it's going to show the top view and we're going to come back and we're going to go to the right view and then we're going to click that down and then we're going to go up at a diagonal and it's going to show the isometric view now i'm going to just put this on the screen as it is you can see it there obviously it's off the page it's overlapping other views we can modify all of that in just a little bit now i want to show you that in just a moment so now that we've got our standard three views on there front top side and our isometric view now we can exit out of this mode so you can say either okay by clicking the check mark or you can hit the escape key uh, to exit out of that mode now we've got our drawing and now we're going to start working with it so the first thing that i see is that it by default solidworks by default has put the views on the page in a in a size that it thought was the right size well i'm looking at it and thinking well that looks like it's a little big so let's go through how to scale our views so that they get to the right size well what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on our front view that again is our parent view and when i click on it it's going to bring up our uh, drawing view properties panel so if i go on to the left and i scroll down i'm going to see a scale box and it says use sheet scale well in this case i'm going to click on use custom scale now this is going to allow me to change the size of those views now if i go here i can make it smaller now I've gone to one to two by just doing the drop down box. Now I look at that and I'm thinking that looks a little bit too small. So I want to click something in between there. I can click the drop down menu and I don't see something in between there. So what I can do is scroll up and you can see the user defined selection. User defined now you can type in your own scale. So I'm going to go one to 1.5. See how that looks. I'm going to hit enter. And that looks a little bit better, but I think I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger than that. How about 1.75? Oops, wrong direction. Let's do this. 2.5. Now we're there. I think that's going to be good. Now that'll allow me to get all my dimensions on there okay. So now I can say okay. But now the one thing that you, well, the one thing that we noticed is that all of the views, the top view, the right side view, and the front view all change scale. Um, and what I'm going to do is now change my isometric view. So that one's a little bit big. 
And you know what? Before I change the scale, I'm going to pull that down. So if I just hit escape, make sure I don't have anything selected, hover over one of the lines, I get the blue crosshair. The blue crosshair says that I can move the part. So I'm going to click and drag that over. I'm going to move it over to the right here. It's still off the page. It's too big. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. But first, I wanted to move it over there. Uh, so now if I hit escape, I have nothing selected. I can click on that view, brings up the drawing view properties for that. And now uh, the scale says use parent scale, but I'm going to say use custom scale here. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and the user defined. So I'm going to say, how about 7.5? That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to use that as my scale. The main thing is, is that I want to lay out all of my views and my isometric view. So it basically takes up the whole page and, but it doesn't seem too cramped or confusing. Remember, we talk about graphical communications and we want it to be clear. We don't want it to make it hard to read, hard to understand. We want everything to be clear. And when we lay things out, so there's enough room around everything without being too big or too small, it's very easy to understand for everyone. So we've got our scale set up. Now, the other thing I want to show you as I move the isometric view, but I, I gotta say, okay, here, now I move the isometric view, but if I wanted to move some of my other views, my front top or side, I can just hover over it, get the blue crosshair, click and drag, and now I can move it. Now, the nice thing here is because I'm moving my parent view, all my other associated or chi children view or child views are also, or are going to be moving because we always want our top view side view to be aligned with our front view so i can move those around and they are aligned and then if i wanted to move the top view i can move that one up and down but i can't move it side to side because that would make it in non-alignment so i won't move side to side i can move it up and down so we've got, we've been, are able to move the views. Now, if I take a look at these views, everything's looking pretty good, except in the top view, I'm missing my hidden lines. In my right side view, I'm missing my hidden lines from my circle. So let's go in there and add those lines in. And what we need to do is on the top view, we can click on that view and scroll down. And we can use this hidden line visible. So it says display style, hidden line visible. Click on that, and now it'll show our hidden lines. Now that's one way to do it. And you can see that it's added it in my top view, but not in my right side view. So I could go and do the same thing for our right side view. Or the other option that I can do is I'm going to move that back. I'm going to actually say use parent style. If I click on my front view, which is my parent view, and then I scroll down and I say, it says display style and I click on hidden lines visible. Now it will, it will change all of my views that reference this parent view, that front parent view. Well, we can see that it's not only changed the front top and side, but it's also has changed the isometric view. And remember on the isometric views, we don't want any hidden lines. We don't want any center lines because it makes it confusing and hard to understand our graphical communication. So we're going to click on our isometric view and turn off hidden lines removed or click on the hidden line removed uh, selection under display style. Now we have removed those. Now we're getting closer. So now we've got our hidden lines and all of our v our orthographic views. And uh, I'm looking at it and I see that I've got my center mark on my circle. Now this one came in by default. Now for some reason SolidWorks doesn't always like to put those in there um, when you bring your drawings in. So I'm going to delete this one off just to show you that if your drawing comes in without that center mark, we can add that in. So what I'm going to do is add my center mark and center lines to my top and side view. So the center mark, what we do is we go up to our annotation tab, make sure we're on our annotation tab. And over here, we have a center mark uh, selection, click on it. And it's really going to say, you can add it manually. Um, and if you're going to add it in there, you just need to click on the circle. 
and there you go you can put that in there i typically will do it by manual there is an automatic mode uh to do that um not too hard but i like to tell which ones i want to do um when i'm putting those in so that's our center mark we can say okay once we have that in there now the next thing we're going to do is our center line so we're going to do our center line now we're going to manually put these center lines in and um, what you can do is you can select the two hidden lines that the center line has to be in between so i can select that now on my right side view i have the hidden line and then my other the top of the circle is hidden behind this visible line so i need to make sure i select the right line there so uh, now i've got those added in now you do need to make sure that you select the right line because if for example i select this on my right side view the left and right side is going to put a center line right in between there. So manually we can put them in anywhere, even though we may not want them there. So make sure you select the correct lines. And in this case, I don't want that center line there. So I'm going to select it and press the delete key on my keyboard, not the backspace key, the delete key. And that will get rid of it. So now taking a look at this, it looks like we've got our hidden lines, our center lines. We've got everything pretty much all set. I think we're missing some dimensions. So let's throw some dimensions in there. This is going to be just like when we did a sketch in our part design. And we're going to go to the annotation tab, go to smart dimension, and now I can add my dimensions here. So if I click on my my vertical line here, you can see it automatically puts a line in there. And I didn't even put it over there, but you can see it has that orange and blue. If I hit my left mouse button it is going to put that dimension right where solidworks put it so it kind of spaces it out puts the number right in the center of our dimension line so sometimes it makes it really easy to put those dimensions on there now i can also if i let's say i'm going to dimension the width of this i can click on that and it puts the dimension on there that four but I can also move down and then I can move this dimension around and put it kind of wherever I want also. So if I, if for some reason I want to put it somewhere different than what SolidWorks is suggesting, I can't physically move it. And then once I get it in the right spot, I want to just click it down, click and release, and it'll place that dimension in there. I'm just going to go around and do this for all of my parts here or all of my dimensions. I've got that. I've got my depth here. I've got my radius of the, or diameter of the circle. Now I need to locate this circle. So I'm going to go from this line to my center mark. And I can put that on here. It will add it in. And then I'm going to go from this line to my center mark. And it will add it in also. Now, when I look at this, I think... This is getting a little tight, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Escape to get out of the Smart Dimension mode, and now I can grab these dimensions and actually just pull them around just to give me a little bit more space so things are a little bit clearer to understand. And let's do here. Now the key is, is that we don't want to have any of our dimensions go into the border of our sheet. You can see our border over here. We don't want our dimension to go into the title block down here either. We don't want it overlapping that. So make sure you're staying out of that region. Even though this is kind of close, I think it'll be okay. So we've got our whole dimension. We've got our whole located. We've got our width, our height, our depth so i think at this point this this drawing looks like it is fully dimensioned so if i hit escape deselect everything i can see how it looks and uh, let's say this does seem a little tight and i do have a little bit of space up here i can hover over and move my view up and give a little bit more space between the dimension and the title block now, the last thing that we need to do is to create our title block or fill up our title block. Now, there's a lot of information in our title block. I don't need you to put everything in there. All I want you to do is make sure we have the title, which is going to be your name, and then you're going to have uh, the drawing number in there. And if you 
labeled or named your part the drawing correct drawing number it will automatically populate that uh, field so really in this one all I need you to do is to add your or in, or in mine all I need to do is add my title block in there so how do we get in there and edit our title block because when we try to hover over it there's nothing there I can't select anything so what we're going to do is we're going to go over into our uh, tree feature manager design tree hover over sheet format right click and then come down to edit sheet format once we click on that all your drawing goes away don't worry it hasn't gone anywhere it just hides it so you're only focused on the the sheet format now if we go over to the title and we can move around right in the center of that title block is a um, text field and you can see the cursor puts an a next to it that means that i'm hovering over that so if i double click on that i will select that text box and now i can put my name in so make sure you put your first and last name in there and you can then uh, modify this if needed so if your name is long or you may want to make it multiple lines you can do that you can highlight your your name and then put uh, change the font size um, with the formatting box that's open so get your name in there now once you have that in there the title in there and let's say your drawing number was wrong you can double click on the drawing number and you can edit that too so that drawing number make sure you put it in the right thing so again i want it to be 810 with the uh, letter of the one that you're using or 811 with the letter of the drawing that you're making now once we have that done we can hit escape got my name got my drawing number correct now we can go back to our drawing and we go over to our sheet format, right click again. Now we'll go back and go down to edit sheet. Edit sheet brings back all of our other views and all of our dimensions. We're looking at it, everything's looking pretty good. So this is really the, the fundamentals of creating a drawing from a part. We can move our views, we can scale our views, we can turn on and off the hidden lines. We can also add center marks. We can add center lines. We can add up all of our dimensions and we can also go in and modify our sheet format. At this point, we can save our drawing out. Um, we can go up, we can do a save as. Again, it's going to give you your file name, um, save type as a drawing and you can do that. And all you need to do is click save. That will save it out. Now, what I want you to do to be able to turn this in, print this, each of your drawings out, and you will turn those in to me uh, when the assignment is due. Hopefully that helps, and uh, good luck. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you very much.